Welcome, Warhammer friends, to our next episode of this narrative-driven Total War Warhammer Immortal Empires campaign. To recap this overall campaign, we are playing as the modded Wood Elf faction Lorelorn Forest, led by Queen Marisith, and early on in our campaign we made some major moves. We were at war with the Black Pit Greenskin tribe, and also shortly declared war on Kazrak, who was basically our next door neighbor. We got a little bit ballsy here too by recruiting some regiments of renown, Zotes, Ancient Tree Men, Great Stag Knights, Regiment of Renown Glade Guards, and also a whole bunch of Treekin, or Dryads I should be te more technical about that. So we took out the starting Greenskin army here and then also launched an attack with as much of our forces as we could against Kazrak. I am also playing with loads of different mods here too, so apologies if there seems to be any lag, especially on the battlefield too. Now off camera, after we, well on camera I did fight the battle against Kazrak, you can find that in the previous episode, but off camera I did launch an attack on the Black Pit. Now with that settlement, it was a decisive victory, nothing too major going on there, there wasn't really too much engagement so I didn't think that it would be worth showcasing that for this episode, but if you would like to see that in a separate video like a battle report just let me know in the comments below. Now we captured it, occupied it, but here's what we're going to do and this might seem a little weird too. We are using a trade settlement mod as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to trade it off to the Fecundites, aka Festus the Leech Lords faction. We're going to confirm the trade, get a total of just over 7,000 gold. And yes, we are in the negative for our predicted income, but the massive influx of gold that we get from trading settlements with this mod is going to offset that negative balance. And you're probably thinking, why am I selling it to the Warriors of Chaos when you know, they, well, we should absolutely hate their guts. Well, we're going to pull off the ultimate betrayal here. So we sell them the settlement and launch an attack, declaring war on them. And yes, it is a little bit premature to do that. Ideally, it would be better to declare war on them when we're actually within sight of their home territory and also with the legendary Lord himself. But we're going to launch an attack there. Occupy it, and then we're going to sell it again to one of our allies here. So it's a very scummy move on our part. But nonetheless, it is something that I'm going to be very shameless about. Now, ideally, we want to sell it to one of our Empire friends here. So we're going to pick the one that will provide us the most. Yes, technically, I would like to sell it to either Nordland or Middenland because they are our neighbors and we essentially I'm going to use Nordland as a buffer zone. Nordland, if we take a look at our grander map here, is going to be protecting us against Wolfric and also any Norskin invaders up here. We also have Boris Toddbringer as our neighborly ally and we've made a few trade agreements and peace uh, treaties as well. We do start off with a defensive alliance with Nordland as well, so that's going uh, to help us a ton. And I really do love Lorelorn's campaign right from the get-go too, because we do start off near the heart of the Empire, but we don't have to worry about the Elector... We don't... Sorry. Stumbled upon my words there. We don't have to worry about uh, the Elector Count mach Machinations mechanics either. So it's kind of like we're taking the perspective of the Elven allies and essentially just doing our own thing and earning a crap ton of money while doing it too. Now going back to the trade settlement screen. If Marienburg is willing, well it looks like Auslan is going to be the one that we can uh, sell it to for the most, almost uh, at the value of 7,000. So in total, we're going to get 13,000 gold from selling the settlement twice. We're not going to attack Auslan just yet. Well, I mean, hopefully not anytime soon. But anyway, that's definitely 
going to be a very cheesy move for the start of this episode. And later on, uh, very soon after, we're going to make a blitz toward Festus and hopefully save Hawkland in the process. Fast forwarding to the diplomacy screen here, we're in a massive amount of luck too because Hawkland does want us to have military access to their lands. Well, they're not going to really benefit too much when it comes to military access uh, with us either, but we can form a military access, defensive alliance, get some money out of it as well. And yeah, they're essentially going to pay us to attack Festus and the Fecundites too. I re- again, I'm going to harp on how much I love Lorelorn's starting the campaign as well because of the fact that you're almost like a good guy or order tied mercenary if that sounds right. You're essentially the closest thing to an ally that the humans of the Empire have to really combat chaos. And we get a decent amount of money out of that too. And also allies slash meat shields. It does look like Festus is uh, very close by though. And I did send uh, one of my uh, legendary lords there as essentially kind of like a vanguard force and also the two have some visibility and sight over Festus. Festus is also, I'm not going to worry too much about him attacking my lone lord there because Hawkland and Crudenwald is going to act as my defensive shield too, but we're going to essentially try to set up an ambush for Festus as well. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of leveling up here, end my turn, and then I'll fast forward to the next interesting part. Fast forwarding about a turn or two, we traveled all the way from the Black Pit over into Hawkland. It was a little bit of a journey, not so much for my lone lord here, but for our main army led by Queen Mariseth. We're setting up an ambush here by Crudenwald. Hopefully Festus will take the bait of attacking my lone lord there. We do have a 90% success chance with our ambush there. I'm not entirely sure if this will count as uh, Al Aldebrand uh, joining us in the battle too, uh, since uh, we are we might technically be in range of our ally there. But if not, best case scenario is we wipe out Festus and then we take all of our armies plus Aldenbrad to assault the Brass Keep. I might make an attack on Hergig uh, to have uh, a staging ground onto the Brass Keep itself because it is a very strong fortress, but at the same time, crippling Festus and then absolutely decimating the Brass Keep will ensure that the Fecundites uh, will not be able to recover, and thus securing uh, this part of the Empire, saving Hawkland, and also providing us uh, with a very strong potential ally here. I might even uh, capture Hergig and sell it uh, back to the uh, Hawkland themself, themselves. But let's take a look at the diplomacy screen here too before we end our turn. We encountered Reichland, made a trade agreement with them, and also it looks like Sterling wants to have a peace agreement with us too. I do want to make uh, them pay us as much as possible, and then the next turn I'll ask them for more money uh, for military access or even a trade agreement too, but a whopping 4,000 gold is really going to help our bank account there. I don't want to make that military access yet because I did essentially just rob them of their coffers. Talabeklan does want to have a non-aggression pact with us, but I'm going to hold that off for now. Main thing is, is I made a trade agreement with Reichlin. Apologies for not uh, showing uh, how much money they gave. They only gave about, give or take, 283, 300 gold. We have defensive alliances with Hawkland and Nordland, and essentially we're surrounding ourselves uh, with potential meat shield allies. Tree hammers, I'm not going to be too worried about them either. I think uh, they could swing either way, helping us against chaos or just going rogue and fighting against the Empire, but. They're not going to pose a threat to uh, uh, us or our Lorelorn Forest. We'll end the turn here. And hopefully Festus will take the bait. 
Right then, taking a look at this battle, we weren't able to pull off a successful ambush, but we are fighting Festus right outside the Brass Keep. So it's lucky on our side that he's not able to pull reinforcements from his fortress. We are also being reinforced ourselves with Hawkland's uh, forces as well. Hawkland swordsmen, bunch of spearmen, and also free company militia and archers. Nothing too impressive there, but they're going to essentially, like I say before, act as essentially distractions for uh, our enemies while our main damage dealers of Glade Guard. And yes, we did recruit several archers using the mercenary uh, mod that I have installed as well. I'm going to save uh, my tree men and hopefully my dryads as well in reserve uh, too because I do need to bear in mind that I need to utilize them for the assault on the brass keep itself. Zotes will very much come into play too and I'm hoping I can uh, draw some of their forces or divide and conquer their forces uh, with my cavalry and even my chariots too essentially uh, running amok and spreading their forces then too. Now, here is my strategy too. I could easily auto-resolve this, but I do want to showcase the actual battle to make it more entertaining for all of you. Now, my very scummy plan is to wait for my reinforcements to arrive, have them take on the brunt of their infantry, hopefully tying down uh, their chaos warriors, and then the rest of my forces can focus fire and pick off certain units like uh, their warhounds, and Definitely their Chaos Giant too. I really want uh, my Empire Archers to focus fire on the Chaos Giant, although I do know that Chaos Gi well, Giants in general now have more resistance against missile fire, but I'm also going to utilize uh, my Spirit Wolves uh, in battle too, but let's see how this goes for us. Also, a little bit of housekeeping on the side too, my friends. The way I'm going to showcase this battle is actually going to be a battle replay instead of live showcasing it because of the fact that I did get some feedback that there was a huge ton of lag when it came to showcasing uh, the battle in real time. I do want to showcase the replay instead and hopefully have more uh, close up uh, shots of the battle and the uh, engagement as well. Taking a look at our battle positions at the start, we do have the high ground advantage here. Eternal Guards, we only have two units of, so our front line is semi-fragile at the moment. Aeonir Explorers, which are essentially our Shadow Walkers taking Vanguard deployment to act as our first line of the Barrage, followed up with the Archers as well, which I will admit we're using it as makeshift frontline troops because our real uh, the archer units, the Glade Guard here, will be the ones uh, focus firing, hopefully on the elite units, moving our Eternal Guard in position. And around this time is when we summon a unit of Ladriel's Wolves on top of their Chaos Warhounds. The goal with Ladriel's Wolves is to essentially not just use them as pawns and meat shields, but to tie down and take out their very fast units, which I know will be very annoying for our cavalry too. First unit of Ladriel's Wolves about to get overwhelmed by Chaos Furies and also Chaos Warriors of Nurgle, so I'm pulling them out back to the tree line here, which I hope to spring an ambush soon with Great Stag Knights and Lost Sylvan Knights. I'm also holding my chariots in reserve here too, to lay waste on any elite units who may chase them down too. This unfortunately was not a good trade-off uh, for the first summon of Ladrios Wolves as they were very much overwhelmed, only taking out a few entities of Chaos Warhounds. I was also considering on summoning a unit of Ladrios Wolves over on the, this left flank around this time too, as when Hawkland's forces to come in to reinforce us, and I am using an Empire reskin mod as well. Essentially giving them modernized armor, something that looks more professional and very much akin to the Holy Roman Empire, which they are technically based off of. Just a couple of basic troops here with some archers and free company militia as the, the main range units here. Aldenbrand, Ludenhoff, the Elector Count, on foot here. I'm very concerned about 
to him having the balls to charge into Festus as well. Ladriel's wolves making another charge or faint, I should say, to get the Chaos Warhounds to chase them down, but also being threatened by Marauders on this flank too. My main concern is, of course, the more elite units of Chaos Warriors of Nurgle. And I don't want to call giants the elite troops, but the, this w Chaos Giant could potentially wreck our front lines too. Going back to our main force, we have uh, Durthu's Wargrove Treemen hidden in the forest here. I do want to save them for reserves in case the giant does become a bit of a menace for us. We also have Queen Marisith on her uh, Great Sag Chariot and also her, her Glade Captain uh, ready to assassinate Festus as well. Festus's hero may also uh, serve as a problem too. Chaos uh, Warhounds taking the bait there, charging into the forest, but also uh, getting assaulted by both Stag Knight units. Ladrios Wolves coming in to reinforce them and chase down uh, these Warhounds. Summoning another unit of Ladrios Wolves to tie down the Chaos Furies and Marauders here to keep them from charging down our cavalry as well. Looks like they're not going to be much of an issue for us. But also, this unit of Ladriel's Wolves in full retreat right now. I did send in this unit of Ladriel's Wolves to reinforce them, but also around this time is when I tell both of them to fall back towards our chariots. Chaos Warhounds completely shattered at this point and taking our stag units to chase down these Chaos Warhounds. Trying not to also uh, uh, incur the wrath of the Marauders and Furies too. Giant also threatening our cavalry there as well. Ludenhov, the absolute mad lad of a man, charging headfirst into the Nurgle armies. Is he going to take on Festus in a 1v1 duel? Highly doubt it. And it seems as though Festus is going to be focusing most of his forces on Hawkland. Strategy there from his perspective, I think, is to absolutely decimate our allies and then hopefully quickly move on to us. Although that is a risky maneuver too, since like I said, we do have the high ground and it's going to take a little bit of time for them to reach us too. His forces are completely divided now. Ladriel's wolves charging into the last remaining Chaos Warhounds. Our main cavalry of Stag Knights and also Sylvan, Sylvan Knights circumventing and uh, pulling off a massive charge uh, to send their Chaos Warhounds into retreat and also ramming through uh, these Marauders too. But I don't want to have either of my Stag Knight units tied down, so I'm going to be charging them through making the, them go into a faint retreat as well. Archers and Free Company Militia getting tied down by Nurglings, unfortunately. Giant also distracted uh, with Hawkland's frontline forces. And Trolls charging in as frontline units. They make good shock units, but at the same time, uh, they don't have very high morale, which they're getting absolutely peppered by our archers, both human archers and the Glade the Guard uh, Archers too. Festus also taking a bit of a beating from uh, our Legendary Lord and also our Glade Captain. Zotes I do plan on uh, uh, using their physical resistance magic to buff our frontline units, which we very much might need to soon with these Chaos Nurgle, Warriors of Chaos Nurgle uh, closing in too. Festus trying to make a retreat there back to the safety of his front lines. Now we have cavalry advantage too, but also taking a beating with Ladriel's wolves, which we are charging into these marauder units to save uh, Aldebran. Sylvan knights and stag knights trying to find a position here on uh, which would be a, a good area to charge into. I don't want to charge them into uh, these great weapons here. 
I do feel somewhat bad for the Empire taking the brunt of the beating and damage for us. However, it is a necessary evil. Alright, these uh, Nurgle Chaos Warriors are absolutely destroyed by our uh, combined effort of Elven Archers and Human Archers too. Although they are getting a little bit winded at the moment, Eternal Guard actually holding out against them too. Stag Chariots charging into the retreating Chaos Warriors, but also laying down fire on Festus, who's also about to get peppered. What a beating this man is taking right now. And who is going to get the last shot? That just might be the Glade Captain. And down goes Festus. In a pool of his own filth. That's starting to shatter the enemy morale too. Nurglings very much on their last legs too. They make good tank frontline units too in the early game but they're about to start disintegrating with the loss of their lord. Marauders also getting overwhelmed by the sheer number of Empire Swordsmen and Spearmen. Sylvan Knights charging into these Marauders to shatter them completely. Aldebaran, I would not suggest taking on a giant near by yourself, my guy. Thank you for distracting him, but I want to say we can definitely take it from here. Then again, I should say we're not in the clear just yet, as uh, this Nurgle hero is going to probably be a pain in our ass if he reaches our front line. We got a little bit over ambitious there, charging into uh, these Chaos Warriors. Ladrio's Wolves running amok right now, charging into these Marauders to uh, try to reinforce and have some sort of hammer and anvil. The tactic with the Empire Swordsmen. It is an absolute bloodbath right now. Nurglings, Marauders, and Swordsmen in a melee at the moment right now. Absolute slog fest. Chaos Giant exhausted, but chasing after our cavalry, which I am doing my best to get the hell out of there as possible. Now with the loss of their lord, hero isolated in a sea of empire swordsmen i want to say the fecundites are essentially chickens without the heads or the headless chicken running around yeah forces are completely shattered and divided marauders will get run down by the by ladriel's wolves here i'll focus fire on the giant here even though we essentially have won the battle, I don't want to have to fight reinforcements uh, from uh, those who may recover too. Please let me know in the comments as well if uh, Nurgle or uh, Festus himself is uh, good at replenishing forces. I don't think they're like the vampire counts, which is essentially bring back their units even if they lose the battle. Chaos Giant having no match whatsoever there. Now, with complete total victory, we're going to send our knights to essentially reap the spoils too, including our wolves. Wolves are going to be one of the unsung heroes of this battle, sacrificing a lot of their entities uh, for the sake of uh, taking out their cavalry and to provide us with cavalry superiority too. Not going to bother with that unit of Chaos Marauders. Or these two either. Now I will admit, I let it slip uh, due to the fact that this exalted hero of Nurgle almost escaped our clutches, but we are sending in both our chariots and also Glade Captain and Queen Mariseth to assassinate him as well. Now admittedly everyone, I did play the battle conservatively, definitely let Hawkland take a beating for us too. However, nonetheless, it was an exciting battle and something that I genuinely also had to manage very well too. In terms of making sure when I pulled off an ambush and also 
making sure that I didn't uh, isolate my cavalry too much or neglected them as well. There was a little bit of micromanagement, now sending the Zotes in to finish off uh, the Chaos uh, Nurgle Warriors. You think you're going to be escaping anytime soon, buddy? We're not going to risk it. Question is, who's going to land the kill? I believe it's going to be Marisith, or actually the Glade Captain too. I think the Glade Captain has a higher range than Marisith herself, although Marisith has a higher speed and can close the distance on him. It actually might be the Chariots. They, they are pulling ahead of the race. You miss every shot you don't take, so make that shot count. And also let me know in the comments if you would have done a more aggressive approach. Oh, actually that arrow looked like it was from... Yeah, our Glade Captain. What a shot. Absolute snipe. No really need for Durthu's Wargrove either. But we'll definitely take that decisive victory. Like I said, the Wargrove was used for reserve and to be used mainly if Festus closed the lines or also the Giant got a little bit too close for comfort. Good quality units with the Chaos Giant and also Chaos Warriors of Nurgle. However, with the help of our Meat Shield allies, they were tied down along with their Marauders too, and we were able to d literally divide and conquer their forces together. So the key to victory here was definitely use utilizing our Spirit Wolves to negate the their fast cavalry with their Chaos Warhounds picking them up apart one by one, and also tying up their Chaos Furies too. When it came to dividing and conquering, Festus was focusing the majority of his forces on uh, Aldenbrand, while he himself did a ballsy move and took uh, some of his, uh, only a small force to attack us too, which we were able to pick him off, both with Marisith and her Glade Captain, and also with every single one of our Archer units. The Chaos Giant was a little bit of a problem later on in the battle and nearly got to our front lines too. We focused a lot of our efforts on taking them down though and then later on utilize our cavalry uh, to uh, hammer an anvil into their marauder and even Chaos forces too. I will say one of the unsung heroes would be our, our chariots as well, picking off the elite targets too, and also laying down some damage on the Chaos Giant, and much later after the battle was over, killing off their hero too, so then there wouldn't be any chance at replenishment, hopefully. I don't think there's going to be any replenishment or uh, a remaining army too. With Festus and his hero dead, the majority of their frontline forces uh, obliterated completely, including the Nurglings themselves. If anything, there's only going to be some Chaos Trolls and Warhounds for us to finish off too. But I don't want there to be too many stragglers. I just want to completely blitz the Brass Keep if possible. With Festus and his main army decimated, the Brass Keep is open for an attack, as well as the neighboring town of Hergig to be retaken by us and Hawkland. We decided to go with army replenishment as well in order to offset the, the fact that we did contract the plague after fighting Festus. And also, I do want to get rid of as many of his forces as possible before we experience any sort of attrition as well. So we're going to assault the Brass Keep, but we are going to save that for the next... For the next episode, it looks like Aldenhof uh, nearly got in the way of our assault there. And regardless of whether you're a new viewer or returning viewer, thank you so much for making it this far in the video. Let me know in the comments if you would choose a different strategy from the one that I'm running with this campaign, and also which units you would recruit with Lorelorn's army too. Also, please let me know on any improvements I could make for the battle or general campaign showcase as I do appreciate all the feedback from uh, each of you. And if you are a new viewer, if you love 
narrative-driven Warhammer campaigns, or also interested in character builds for Baldur's Gate and Elder Scrolls, which I do plan to upload very soon in the future. I'd love to have you join us on those adventures, friends. So remember to hit the like, subscribe, and bell icon notifications, and I'll save you a seat at the table. Take care and farewell.